acids and bases. So acids, they like to donate a hydrogen ion and that's what we're talking about when they're placed in water. So with acids and bases we're always talking about these species when they're in water. So in other words when they're aqueous. So acids like to donate a hydrogen ion or we say a proton because a hydrogen ion is just a proton. Bases, also known as alkalines, like to accept a hydrogen. And this picture here shows exactly what happens with an acid and a base. So an acid, for instance, hydrochloric acid, is the hydrogen plus whatever the rest of the acid is, but it always has to have a hydrogen there. And what it does, that acid, is it donates that hydrogen to a base. And that's all that's happening. An acid is giving away its hydrogen and a base is accepting a hydrogen. Properties of acids. They usually taste sour. They are corrosive. In other words, they can destroy living tissue and metal. You'll often think of corrosive as eating through things. And with acids, they will eat through both any form of living tissue, such as skin or flesh, um, and also things like wood, so anything made out of trees, etc., etc., and also metal. And that's a big difference between um, acids and bases. Turns litmus paper red. Litmus, for those of you that haven't seen any, is an indicator paper, and we're doing a prac with litmus paper. But basically, there's blue litmus paper and red litmus paper, and acids will turn either of those two red. They're usually covalent molecular in structure and will ionise when they're added to water. If we look back here, HCl, if this was HCl, and it loses the hydrogen, it'll become Cl negative. And it's gone from being a covalent molecule to ionising. They are neutralised by acids. They have a pH of less than 7. And they're proton donors. We've already spoken about that before. Hydrogen ion is a proton. Here are some examples of the most common acids that you'll find. And these are a couple here that you need to know the formulas off by heart. So nitric acid is HNO3. And this is used often um, in industry uh, to manufacture fertilizers in particular, and also when they do copper etching. So artists will use that, or um, I guess if they're making clocks out of copper. Hydrochloric acid, you've all used that one in the lab definitely, and that's HCl. It's produced in your stomach. It's also used to clean bricks and concrete. And sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. And that's used in car batteries and plastics, insecticides, detergents, and in pharmaceuticals. And the other one that you'd need to know off by heart the formula of is acetic acid, also known as ethanoic acid. And if you have a look at the formula here, um, CH3COOH, what do you think of? F, meth, F, two carbons. Okay, so ethanoic acid. And that's found in vinegar um, and it's used in pickling and the fermentation of foods. There's some other ones here as well that you'll be familiar with. Um, lactic acid in milk. Um, lactic acid's also produced in, in your muscles. Scorpic acid's vitamin C. Uh, carbonic acid's found in your soft drinks. And citric acid's found in lemon juice. Properties of bases. They taste bitter. They feel slippery or sometimes described as feeling soapy. They turn litmus paper blue. They are usually ionic compounds except for ammonia. I will be looking in some detail with some reactions in a minute. They may be caustic, in other words, destroy living tissue. And remember I said earlier that the difference between acids and bases is that acids will eat away at metals. Bases will not. Um, bases are often used as, well, you'll generally find that they're cleaning products. You may have heard of caustic soda before. Um, things like your Harpic toilet cleaner and your Drano are very, very caustic. Um, they can destroy living tissues. When you pour them down the drain or in the toilet, they'll destroy all the bacteria that's there, but they won't wreck your pipes. I mean of the plumbing, not of your own pipes. Anyway, moving on. Okay, they've got a pH greater than 7, so it's above 7. Acids are below 7, remember. 
And a base that's soluble in water is called an alkali. So spaces can be described as being alkaline, which is more of the adjective describing it, or basic, or it can be an alkali if it's soluble in water, or it's a base if it's not soluble in water. It can have both of those names, alkali or base. And it's a proton acceptor. It will accept a hydrogen ion. So here's a couple of your common bases that you'll see. Ammonia is a very um, popular cleaning product. Um, they say they're in detergents, also in fertilizers. And you get that really pugnant smell with ammonia in hair dyes as well. Uh, sodium hydroxide, caustic soda, NaOH, which is in soaps and detergents. Sodium carbonate, Na2CO3, another um, quite... Uh, um, popular one or found in detergents and washing powders. They're the three that I'd really, really like you to know. You should also really be familiar with calcium hydroxide. Whenever you see a hydroxide or an oxide, you should pick up that that is a base. Uh, magnesium hydroxide here, you'll often find them in indigestion products um, like your Enos or your Rennies or things like that because what they will do is balance out too much acid or neutralize too much acid in your stomach. Reactions of acids. An acid plus a metal, when combined, will always make a salt and hydrogen gas. An example of that. Nitric acid plus zinc will make hydrogen gas and what's left? zinc nitrate. We'll look at the formula here. HNO3 plus ZN. So the ZN hooks up with the NO3 to make zinc nitrate and the two hydrogens get left to make hydrogen gas. Another example. Sulfuric acid plus magnesium makes magnesium sulfate and hydrogen gas. So write down your formula for sulfuric acid and magnesium and then you'll be able to work out the products. So sulfuric acid, H2SO4, aqueous, don't forget your states, plus magnesium solid, make hydrogen gas, H2, and what's left, magnesium hooks up with SO4 to make magnesium sulfate aqueous, that's the salt. So an acid and a metal always make a salt plus hydrogen gas. Okay, so you can see here, this is what happens when um, magnesium metal is added to nitric acid on this side or hydrochloric acid on this side. You can see this vigorous reaction. This is producing hydrogen gas. If we were to light a match in front of on top of this, this would be a big explosion. This has been done in a fume cup and as you can see these are quite strong acids being used. An acid plus a metal hydroxide or a metal oxide will make salt and water. So, an example, hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide makes sodium chloride plus water. HCl plus NaOH makes sodium chloride, which is the salt. The sodium there has hooked up with chloride, and what's left is H2O. And that makes H2O. Remember, water is always liquid. Don't forget your states. How do you tell if your salt is soluble? You look it up on the solubility table. Hydrochloric acid and calcium oxide will make calcium chloride plus water. Hydrochloric acid and calcium oxide, you know they're going to make a salt plus water. Here's your water. Remove your two hydrogens and your oxygen. What's your salt that's left? Calcium plus chloride. And the last reaction is an acid plus a metal carbonate or a metal hydrogen carbonate will make a salt plus water. And if you have a look, you can see the carbonate there. It's going to make carbon dioxide. 
So nitric acid plus sodium carbonate will make sodium nitrate plus water plus carbon dioxide. 2HNO3 plus Na2CO3 will make always, always, always water plus carbon dioxide. The hardest part is figuring out what the salt's going to be. You've got sodium and you've got nitrate. So you just need to make sure that those valencies are balanced there to get sodium nitrate. Um, and as I said, make sure that you check your solubility table. And here's just showing you um, some marble chips, which are um, calcium carbonate, which are reacting with hydrochloric acid. And that gives what gas? Carbon dioxide. Excellent. Okay, so let's have a look at a couple of example questions. What I want you to do is have a go at these. You need to write both full and ionic equations for the next three reactions. Magnesium and sulfuric acid. Okay, what you need to do is think about all of our little rules or our three little rules that we learn above. You've got a metal and an acid. What's it going to make? It's going to make a salt plus hydrogen gas. Okay, pause this now. Have a go at the next three questions um, and then come back and correct your answers and I'll just run through them. Okay, so magnesium plus H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid, will make hydrogen gas plus a salt. What's the salt going to be? Magnesium plus sulfate. So it makes magnesium sulfate. Make sure you check your valencies that these balance out and check your solubility table so that you know whether this is aqueous or solid. Also make sure you've got your other states written in. Then you need to make sure this is balanced. One magnesium, one magnesium, two hydrogen, two hydrogen, one sulfur, one sulfur, four oxygen, four oxygen. Brilliant. Next thing we need to do is look at the ionic equation. So let's see what's changing states. We've got magnesium going from solid to aqueous magnesium it will be included in the ionic equation. Hydrogen goes from hydrogen aqueous to hydrogen gas, again included. Sulf, um, sulfate aqueous goes to sulfate aqueous. That's our spectator iron. We do not include that in the ionic equation. So our overall ionic equation looks something like this. Magnesium solid plus two hydrogen ions goes to magnesium and two plus aqueous plus hydrogen gas. H2 hydrogen gas. H2 is hydrogen gas. Please don't make the mistake of just writing H. You will not balance your reaction um, and hydrogen gas is always H2. Oxygen gas is always O2. Gases hang out in pairs. Balance this. Two hydrogens here so we need two hydrogen ions on this side. Next one. Aluminium plus nitric acid. First, figure out what you've got, a metal plus an acid. Great, we know that it makes salt plus water. Aluminium solid plus nitric acid, HNO3, makes hydrogen gas plus our salt, which will be aluminium plus nitrate, so aluminium nitrate. Look at your valencies, make sure that they balance out and check your solubility table. Once you've done that, you just need to balance the entire equation. Two aluminium, two aluminium, six hydrogen, three times two is six hydrogen, one nitrogen, ooh, beg your pardon, sorry, six nitrogen, two times three is six nitrogen, plus Oxygen 3 times 6 is 18. So I've got 3 times 3 is 9 oxygen times 2 oxygen is 18 oxygen. Ionic equation. Let's look what doesn't change state. Aluminium went from solid to aqueous. It's included in the ionic equation. Hydrogen goes from aqueous to gas. We include hydrogen. Aluminium. Oh, we already said that that has to be included. And um, your hydrogen gas gets included. 
Your nitrite is your spectator ion, so it is not included in your final reaction. Again, balance your reaction. Most of the time you'll find if you use the same numbers from above, it will balance out. Sometimes you can make these a little bit simpler. Sulfuric acid and sodium oxide. Sodium oxide plus an acid, and oxide and acid makes water plus a salt. So, sulfuric acid, sodium oxide will make water. We get the H doing the O, and that leaves us with sodium sulfate. Remember, valencies, and then balance the whole equation. So this is already balanced. Two hydrogens, two hydrogens, one sulfur, one sulfur, four oxygen, four oxygen, two sodium, two sodium. I beg your pardon, five oxygen and five oxygen. Your ionic hydrogen. It's gone from aqueous to liquid, so hydrogen is included. Liquid hydrogen at the end, or water. Um, sodium goes from sodium solid to sodium aqueous. Sodium oxide is included. You cannot break up a solid, the same as you can't break up a liquid here. So you always have to write these in full. Um, and then, of course, you get the sodium, which is the uh, product here on this side, sodium ions. Make sure this is balanced. You'll see here the numbers don't match above, so you need to think about that. So I've got two hydrogen ions, two hydrogen here, two sodium, two sodium, one oxygen, one oxygen. I have a balanced equation. Okay, you are now ready to do chapter 13, questions 1 to 10. They're on page 239.